Okay, so now we know those loss functions, right? but unlike a, a deterministic linear model, we are unable to take a derivative and, and estimate and, and define the theta parameter analytically. That's why we call the model training, because we have to train the network step by step using the data. And one important concept or algorithm in network training is called a stochastic gradient descent. Right? Many opt optimizers are variants of the SD SGD algorithm. So if you look at the figure on the right-hand side, just imagine that uh, theta A and theta B are the two parameters of your network. So you have a simple network, only two parameters, and the z-axis shows the loss function, which is, for example, the previous um, negative of your like, a log likelihood. And your goal is to find the optimal theta A and theta B that goes from your initial value to the optimum value, which is the minimum of a loss function. So in order to do so, you need to know the gradients of the loss function, right, with respect to the two parameters. So the gradients, if we look at this question, equation, the gradients need to be calculated with some input data, x prime and y prime. And, but, the, the, but the problem is that we cannot feed lots of data and, in calculating the gradients. Just imagine this is only two dimension and in, re, in reality we have uh, millions of parameters or so millions of dimensions. And that's, that's why stochastic gradient descent, the, it randomly selects a part of the training data, so-called a batch, and use that batch to calculate the gradients and update theta A and theta B. And by carefully sampling and the selection and after many batches, you can cover the whole data set. And this is called one epoch. That's why you always hear that people say, I trained my model for one epoch and for 100 epoch and so on. Yeah, so as you can see from the previous slide, I hope I can convince you that neural network models are stochastic, right? Because there is randomness in the training procedure and the training data is noisy. And to add on that, the network architecture may also have deficiency for your problem. Right? So now we know that the model is stochastic instead of deterministic. Coming back to our most important question, what is the posterior of X, right, of our signal that we want to maximize? And the posterior will depend on the input, um, on the input data Y, our observation Y, and the training data D, which trains the model. So the answer here is that we have to consider the posterior of X at all possible solutions of the model parameter theta. So this equation reads like this. The first term means that the posterior of x, given the input y, and given a fixed solution of the model parameter. For example, you train a network once, you have a one fixed solution of the model parameter. And if you train a second time, the solution will be different. And this different solution will associate with a different probability, p. So we have to consider all these solutions with their different probabilities and integrate them all. So the next slide from my colleague Rudolf explains um, this, um, um, this equation. So here we consider a simple classification problem. We have a training data class one and class two and our goal is to find a linear classifier that separates these two classes. And our linear classifier is only governed by one parameter, which is the slope of this line, right? And then this solid line here shows one um, training outcome of the classifier. So if we put the test data which, show, which is shown as the, the star here. And this classifier will predict 
one um, outcome. It, it shows a high probability for class one and lower probability for class two, which is very reasonable. However, as I just mentioned, this classifier is only one possible solution, right? The classifier can take any, many other possible solutions, for example, here. As you can see, the classifier can be this horizontal line, and this will also give a different prediction from the previous one. This one will predict lower probability for the first class and higher probability for the second class. Of course, this kind of prediction will have lower chance or lower probability than my previous classifier. So we have to take a weighted, so-called weighted average of all of these solutions in order to get our final answer. So this is an example of uncertainty in machine learning models, and there are different types of uncertainty in machine learning models. And it is uh, generally agreed in the community there are so-called the aleatoric uncertainty, which means the uncertainty coming from the data, and the epistemic uncertainty, which means data, which means the model uncertainty. And, and this figure shows um, the different types of uncertainty in machine learning models. The first row shows an example for regression problem, and the second row shows uh, the example for classification problem. So maybe I start from the first figure. As you can see, the green dots is the training data, and the blue curve shows the ground truth uh, model. And in this case, even if you pick a correct category of the model, and your model prediction will have a higher uncertainty on the right-hand side and lower uncertainty on the left-hand side because the model training depends on the training data. Right? If we move on to the second figure, now imagine even if you have a noise-free training data, as you can see, this is indicated by the green dots perfectly lying on the blue curve, there's, which means there's no noise in the training data. Even if you have noise-free training data, but you picked a round ca category of model, so here is indicated by this oscillating um, curve on a sigmoid curve, and you will have a large uncertainty of the training model because the model does not fit the data. Now, last but not least, last but not least, it's called a distributional uncertainty. This means when you have noise-free training data and you have picked the correct type of model, your model is still uncertain outside the domain of your training data. So the model is simply not trained to predict the things outside its knowledge. So this is a distributional data and somebody also considered this as a part of the epistemic uncertainty. So the same type of um, um, uncertainty also applies on classification problem. For example, the figure in the middle below is exactly the example I showed in the previous slides. The large um, empty space between these two classes allow the model to wiggle so creating large uncertainties. So in the next few slides, I'm going to explain these type of uncertainty using um, some graphics of uh, classification problem. So uh, as you know, we have the training and testing stage, right? In the training stage, we usually collect images uh, in a cloud-free condition and at, the, at a certain timestamp. However, in testing stage, the weather um, is maybe different, there might be clouds, and the object on the ground may have changed. So this creates already a distributional shift from test da testing data to training data. So this is a part of the epistemic uncertainty. And when we collect um, training, either training data or test data, those data will contain noise. So this is so-called aleatoric uncertainty, and this noise is shown as the blurry images here. Well, when during the training stage, we also need the, uh, the labels, right? If you focus on these two patches here, as you can see, somebody labeled the first one as a settlement and the second one as a forest. 
despite these two patches are the same. So this means there is also ambiguities in the label. So this is a label noise. So all these label noise, data noise, are part of the aleatoric uncertainty. And those type of noise is not possible to reduce because they are coming from the data. Now, we, when we feed those training data into the uh, network training, and as I mentioned before, the stochastic process will, will create uncertainty in the model, as well as the structural in the model will create another level of uncertainty. Those are all epistemic uncertainty, and those epistemic uncertainty can be reduced. So in the inference stage, additional unknown factors, for example, that is an unexpected object, creates additional distributional shift from test and training data. So those are um, the different types of uncertainty that we will face in a classification problem in Earth observation. So hope um, this figure has uh, given you um, a visual um, impression of the uncertainty in machine learning model for Earth observation. And the next one, a big question is the quantification of those uncertainties. Right? Here, one of the uh, most prominent methods is so-called a Bayesian neural network because it gives a, a solid mathematical foundation for the uncertainty quantification. The typical techniques will be the sampling techniques like Monte Carlo, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo, and variational inference. I, due to time, I was not able to go into detail of these methods as well as um, um, different types of uncertainty quantification methods. But I encourage you to read the papers from, from here, from my colleague uh, um, Gav Likowski for more information. All right, so this is the um, whole content of the talk. As a short summary, I uh, showed you a few examples of machine learning in Earth, Earth observation. We have typically three types of problems, is the classification, segmentation, and regression problems. And I also have a very brief introduction to maximum likelihood, likelihood estimator and maximum a posterior estimator uh, for deterministic case and also for the machine learning model case. And um, you also learned different types of uncertainties in machine learning models, uh, mostly they are categorized into aleatoric, which means data uncertainty, and epistemic uncertainty, which means model uncertainty. So last but not least, I showed you um, a, um, a typical categorization of different uncertainty quantification methods, um, which is very important as a next question to really quantify the uncertainty in a neural network and machine learning models. So here are some reference for you uh, to further read um, in detail of that course. Okay, that's all.